Hey, folks. Welcome, and uh, we're going to get started in a, in a couple of minutes. Can you hear me okay out there? See if we can get a few more people in. Just taking a look at the price action after hours here. Okay, um, so we're going to go here and begin with just a rundown of what the game plan is. Uh, we'll probably have a very small group here. Um, what I want to do is answer questions with regard to uh, any of the positions that we're in right now, uh, any questions with regard to strategy moving forward, uh, and any questions that you may have with regard to your positions. And I want to try to make this more of a... Uh, a more of a routine type session rather than just sending out market wrap uh, to make it more engaging and to provide you more value uh, as a member. So if you have any uh, suggestions on how to improve these sessions, I really appreciate that feedback. And um, let's get to it. Uh, so leave uh, any comments or questions that you have in the, in the chat box. Uh, this is a private group session, uh, so I don't expect a whole ton of people here. Uh, some people maybe just on the West Coast can't join in because it's midday. And I may have to push these sessions back a little bit later, maybe around 7, uh, 8 o'clock. It gets a little bit rough because I start fading by that time. I'm not as on cue as I would like to be. Um, so it's a because I start recording at, at 5 a.m. in the morning, and so it's a very, very long day with, with recording. Uh, so I, could, I see a couple of uh, members on now. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a run-through of normally how I do market wrap, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep checking in on the chat box because as I go through market wrap, stop me. If you have questions, you want me to do a deep dive on one of the charts, rather than me just putting out the video each night, Maybe you have a question with regard to IWM uh, or another chart and you want to see on a four-hour basis, a daily basis, weekly basis, whatever, you know, this is your time to really engage and uh, to ask questions. And I'm here to an answer those questions and that's part of your membership. I want to provide you value. And I'm always trying to do that. And I was hoping I put a lot of investment into the live streams in order to generate that value. Uh, so this is like... Uh, Baby steps right now. One of the first steps is having these uh, these group sessions, which I've been wanting to do for so long. So um, let's do a quick rundown of uh, just a quick summary of what um, what is driving the market. And it's certainly not positive earnings, right? We have... Uh, we have earnings that have, that were that were reported today that were simply uh, they may have beat on on earnings, but they missed on revenues. Typical Wall Street BS, and the shares are getting punished. You see a lot of red on this screen. Hasbro hammered. Here's NEE that was up. I want to talk about that chart in a moment. So the Dow companies are having some problems here. Those are our mega caps. And I said on the, the, the market wrap summary a, a few minutes ago, which I put out to the world, uh, that the real earnings begin tomorrow. That is not to discount uh, the, the uh, impact that the Dow 30 stocks have on the overall market. But the, the real headlines that'll capture people's attention are the, the, the millennial generation, and that's Twitter. That is the Googles when they come out, or the, uh, Amazon. But those are real headline numbers that are going to get their attention. Hey, Norris! Yeah, absolutely, Norris. Absolutely. Been seven, selling covered calls and buying more. I bought more last week. So, yeah, I, I'll go over that chart. You want me to do a deep dive into it? 
Uh, I've just been generating premium on it, and that's been the game plan. Good to see you. Join in. Outstanding. Where do you live again, Norris? I, I, whenever I uh, hear your name or see your name, I always think of Texas. Is that accurate or am I way off? Texas. All right, good. Cool. Uh, so we'll go, over, we'll go over Nugget, Norris, no doubt about it. We'll spend some time there. Uh, fellow member Baroon had a question with regard to covered calls. I'm not sure if he's on right now. Hopefully he got the email. I'm going a little bit slow right now because I sent out that link to the live stream a little bit late. Baytown, Texas. All right, so I'm not losing it. Great. Cool. I'm, I'm a big Texas fan. I used to, in my, uh, in my earlier days, I used to have to fly down to, I was in Dallas. Uh, I had some business over on the east side, or at least the land in Dallas, and head over to uh, T uh, Tyler, Texas, right by uh, Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. So I love, uh, I love Dallas. I haven't been down to Houston. You still holding the utilities, uh, Norris? Energy did good today, so you, you should be doing well there. When did you buy in? So big, big Dallas fan. Love Mesquite, the rodeo over there. So a lot of good memories in Texas. A lot of good memories there. So uh, long story short, earnings, not good. Not good. Let's move on to the charts of the day. All right, so the big takeaway from me today, and this goes to the NUGT position, Norris, is that gold and the miners have been trading down with the... Oh, you, you sold the utilities. You made good money on them, did you? I hope. Um, the uh, the bond market has been trading uh, with the, I should say, the precious metals and the miners have been trading with bonds. So as, as goes the bond market, so goes uh, the price of precious metals. So today what we saw was a bit of a reversal bar on the day. I think that this is the first sign of us having some bottoming here on precious metals. So what I want, this is a weekly chart and this is a weekly view, so that's good. I want to drill down now to a daily view to get a better vibe for the day. Bullish reversal day. Stokes are beginning to hook up. And generally, you get a U-shape or a V-shape hookup on the TLT. So I'm expecting rapid-fire action here to the upside on the TLT. Congratulations on that trade, Norris. Um, moving on to the dollar. The dollar also flashed a bullish reversal day today. And it closed above support. This is the dollar bull ETF. Looking good. The VIX. Bullish reversal bar. We're heading up into the resistance level. We backed off of it on the day. And again, if you want me to stop on any of these charts, do a deep dive. Or if you want me to go over stock related to uh, the sector that will go over, please let me know and I'll do that. We're just learning this as we go along and eventually we'll catch a momentum of what you folks are looking for and how I can best serve. So uh, don't hesitate, type in a, uh, a question, a remark, a request, whatever. Um, so the VIX, bullish key reversal. Now here is a chart that is very, very good. And it's the chart of, this is my daughter's Wonder Woman cup. If you're wondering why am I drinking out of a Wonder Woman cup. Uh, the Dow Transport had a big day today. I mean, we broke out yesterday 
We pulled back today, retested support, and rallied. And we closed at the highs of the day, despite the weakness on the overall market, which is really, really good. So, nice price action here. And Norris, I'll go to the energy sector for you in a moment. Now, here's the S&P 500, bearish key reversal day. Let's take a look at the intraday chart here really quick. Normally, I cut out these gaps of when they load a different screen, so I apologize for that. Yeah, this is not good. Here's where the markets are sending us a signal. Topping action. We close down below the 3,000 mark. This is on the SPY. Let me check the SPX. Yep. All right, so horrible price action. That final uh, two hours of trade was on volume, no less. Not good. And the fact that Texas Instruments missed going into uh, the day, I mean, going into um, the close, not good for the open tomorrow. Let's take a quick look at Texan right now. Not good. This is a 15-minute chart. Let's take a look at the semi-holders. Not good. They rallied them back. What kind of volume was this? Re a fairly good volume for probably one trade, but they dropped it right back down again. So the semis are down, near session lows. This is not setting up for a good day tomorrow. Now, I see that a couple other people joined in. Folks, what we're doing is just a rundown of the charts. If you want me to stop, go over these charts for you in greater detail. If you have a stock you want me to go over, we'll be more than happy to do it. Uh, any questions, feedback, we're just feeling our way around here. What uh, kind of value we could drive out of these um, group sessions. I don't expect a whole ton of people, which is good. And I can spend more time uh, drilling down on topics that you're interested in. So uh, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm here. This is, this is your time. So the transport's looking good, but the semis not looking good. Spider's not looking good. The Dow, bearish reversal bar today. IWM. We're holding the, um, the breakout, the gap higher. It's going to be interesting. I, I, I'm expecting a pullback tomorrow and a retest of the 153 level here. It'll be interesting to see whether or not that holds by the end of the day. Let's see how we close out the day on a two-hour chart. Yeah, not good. So you can see we are... Um, Seeing signs of resistance, lots of topping action here. We had a bearish reversal bar at the close. You have buyers that, from back here. They're looking to get made whole. How was vo volume rose into the close? Now, going to uh, Norris's question with regard to energy. Uh, good day today. Oil, um, okay, Norris, we'll go over EEM and the XLE for you, brother. You got it. Uh, oil closed higher, off the highs of the session. But I, I wouldn't expect a straight shot higher here. And you saw derivative plays rally as well. You saw home heating oil, uh, what else? Uh, gasoline. Spike up higher. They did pull back off the highs of the day, along with crude. Uh, but this is this also the reason why I bring those derivatives up is that it, it speaks to inflation, and that's a major concern. You had the Federal Reserve back in there in their buying bond buying business, and you're seeing oil begin to break out on a daily basis. 
along with the derivative plays. So it's concerning. And you may see inflation numbers that initially come out that'll spook the market, uh, causing people to sell gold and the silver. And they don't realize that in reality, the Federal Reserve is not going to pay attention to inflation. They don't care. They don't care about the little guy. So they're going to let inflation run. And it's not me making it up. They've already said it. Goes back to uh, Janet Yellen in her statement. And with uh, Jay Powell's statement of inflation at two spot, 4% or 2% on average, uh, it's an average. So, you know, what, what's the happy number? I don't know. And I don't think that they know. I, they, this is a grand experiment, experiment and they have no clue of what is, the outcome is going to be. It's, it's scary time. Uh, so RSI rising, higher lows, looking good here. The only thing negative I have to say about the chart of oil today is that we backed off the highs of the day. No great shock there. And volume was light. Looking at Stoke RSI, rock solid. Looking good. Let's take a look at the XLE. Since it's a request for you, Norris, we'll take a look at it from a weekly view and then drill down on it. CVX made a good, good profit, hopefully. CVX, but switched to XLE, thinking 117 might be a temporary top for a while. On XLE or CVX, Norris. Uh, let me take a look at the price of... All right, so actually, so you must be talking about CVX. We'll take a look at the chart. All right, so the XLE still remains range-bound. Uh, when does this get sexy? It becomes really attractive. I mean, it's looking good so far on for multiple reasons. And you're seeing on a weekly basis, so this is critical, right? We're doing that top-down approach to our analysis. On a weekly basis, we're seeing higher lows. Perfect upper band of resistance. Now, this double bottom setup in a higher low on energy weekly basis is very, very attractive to me. So, while I am not all that bullish on price yet, I'm getting there. Uh, you're seeing the Stokes rise, which is good stuff. Cool, Norris. Got you. Yes, cool. So, in terms of price, you can see that we have a... Let's ignore this filled candlestick here for a moment. And we are above resistance on a weekly basis. We will look to challenge the upper band of resistance fairly soon. Now, ultimately, when you get bullish on the XLE, you can really forget about this filled candlestick because really I would get uh, very, very uh, att attracted towards the XLE on a close above 64.12 per share. So initially, where I wanted to add more to my position or open a position, I would scratch the itch perhaps on a retest at 58.50 next week. Then on a close above this secondary downtrend line, forget this upper band. In fact, let's get rid of it. If we close above this upper band of resistance here, I would add more. Then I would stay small until we get up here and close above 64 spot 12. Now, the other thing I like here are Stoke RSI. It's moving up higher. Volume this week is, 
I'm not sure how it's going to roll out too early in the week to make a comment on it. MACD is looking good. Uh, Williams percentage are looking good. So, weekly view looking good. Daily view. All right, so we were tracking the rise. Only 500? Modest guy. That's a good amount. It's a good position. That's a good position to sell covered calls on. Five contracts. Uh, so we have rising RSI. We have a breakout above the 50 level on RSI, which is bullish. Stokes are both, oh uh, yeah, both lines on Stokes back above 50, which is bullish. We close off the highs of the day, which is a concern. Volume was very, very good today. So, let's bring up the XLE. All right, so we were overbought. We corrected, no big deal. Let's take a look at a four-hour chart. All right, so Norris, I think we're probably going to get a continuation pullback here, maybe down to the 20-period moving average, because whenever you get these overbought conditions on the third standard deviation Bollinger Band four-hour chart, more often than not, you're getting a pullback to the rising 20-period moving average. Just as you did back here, back here, back here, you know, so rinse, wash, repeat. So I would stay long. Uh, if you're interested in selling covered calls, that's an option for you. I would try to stay out of the money. I don't know if they do weekly options. So XLE looking good. It's, it's looking better. Let's go back to your chart of the CVX. All right, so again, let's go with the weekly view. Are you looking to get back into Chevron? All right, so I'll save the time of annotating the chart. Uh, we're in no man's land right now, basically a consolidation. I like the XLE better than Chevron. That should make you feel good. Daily chart. Now, here's what, this is why I didn't want to get involved too much in the analysis of the weekly chart, is because I don't like the daily price action here. Uh, we rallied up into the declining 50 period moving average okay uh, and honestly norris it's a good thing because i i wouldn't buy the shares right now it looks as though we have a declining ceiling on on uh and i think you're right on the chart the daily chart this 50 period moving average and you have the 200 period moving average which is also acting as a resistance level now that being said you have RSI, which is rising, and Stokes. I think that we're probably going to get a pullback here first, though. I'm not loving the price action. I like the indicators a lot more than I like price. However, price and volume matter most, right? So I need to defer to the price and volume primarily. Volume, no, no bueno. I would say that there's a warning flag on the track here for Chevron. All right, let's talk NUGT. Now, remember that the, um, the bond market rallied today across the spectrum. Short-term bonds, long-term bonds rallied. Good stuff. 
So what that did is it put a bid under NUGT. Right now, NUGT is trading as it did a year ago uh, with the U.S. dollar, meaning at that time they traded inversely, right? Uh, not so much now, but this time last year, if the dollar ticked up higher, uh, NUGT ticked down lower, right? But now you're seeing uh, the correlation of more importance being uh, the bond market, bond prices, not yields, with uh, gold, silver, the miners. So I'm watching the bond market far more closely than I am the dollar action. You don't hear me talking about the dollar as much right now. Uh, bond market far more important. So what we saw today was, again, a rally. I went over the TLT, uh, a rally in bonds. On a weekly basis, we're off the lows of the week, so that's bullish stuff. Now, taking a look at NUGT, the screen's gotten blur. That bit may be the connection. Trying to fix it now. Can you let me know if it, if it gets better? giving me stream health good oh I know what I did it's okay now yeah there's a setting here it's called stream latency and it's on normal I was supposed to set it to low my bad I'll know for the next time Norris thank you for bringing that to my attention I see a couple of other members joined in here. This is a members-only session. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, symbols that, uh, in particular, NARS has requested. And uh, if you have questions, we're just going to go through. Oh, it's still bad, huh? Shit. Um, hmm. I can't restart it because I'll lose everyone. Is this chart looking any better, Norris? Should I use this one? Or was stockcharts.com better? All right, I'm going to move on here. And I'll know for next time. Still bad. Darn it. All right. Thanks, Norris. I'll, I'll, I'll try to verbalize as much as possible, articulate what we're seeing here. Uh, so, folks, if you're joining, we have a little bit of technical issues with the, uh, with the um, quality of the resolution. And I, I'm aware of what the setting is supposed to be. And um, I can't change it right now because it'll end the, the, the screen share. So my apologies for that. Um, so we we're talking about NUGT. NUGT uh, did rally off the lows of the day today. And I think that we're fairly close to a bottom here. And this is the daily chart that I'm fo primarily focusing on. You can see that this is also a weekly support level that we bounced off of today. And keep in mind that we were above the upper band of resistance early on in the week. So we remain in this descending wedge formation, but I think that we're bottoming out here on uh, NUGT. So we hit that lower band of support last week. We did it again this week. Daily chart. Uh, we still closed down on the day. At one point, we went positive late in the afternoon, and we closed off the lows of the day. 
So when would I look to add more here? I think that you could add more, assuming that the bond market continues higher. Because we need to see, again, I, I hate to keep overemphasizing this, we need to see bond prices and they, on this daily chart, broke out today. We have a breakout here on the 10-year Treasury bond price. So it looks as though it's game on for the bond market. And that should mean good things for NUGT. Any questions about the NUGT trade, Norris? If not, I'm going to move on to the other charts and wrap things up. Google, I don't know why I have Google up there. Angie's List closed up today. We're still consolidating here. I wouldn't add more until we got a breakout and a close above $7 per share. Not much really else going on here. The banks continue to rally today. This is the region, these are the regional banks. But we close off the highs of the day. We need to see a close on a weekly basis above I uh, yeah the question is should we have a stop loss in under NUGT I think that if we break down to new lower weekly lows we need to stop out on Friday afternoon if we're trading at the lows of the week we need to stop out of at least probably a half of our position we have a hedge on a portion of it uh, but if we if we can see a continuation, let's bring up the chart if we see a, a break weekly basis And it closed down below this level, this red line here. We're going to need to think about lightening up. The low of the day today was 25.81 on the day. But I think that we may have just seen the lows on NUGT. Fingers crossed, but great, great question. Uh, and it needs to get asked. Pro a, a close at the, at the lows of the week would have us out because the low of the week is below this weekly support level. This is a 30-minute basis, but uh, it's below the weekly support level. So uh, that's my answer to that question. But right now, I, I like the setup here. I think that today's rally in the back half of the day is very bullish. If you take a look, you're welcome, Norris. Enjoy your dinner, pal. And tell your wife hello, please. Um, let's take a look at gold. Brune, is that you? BA, right? I'm trying to keep all of the uh, the YouTube log, uh, you know, what do you call them? Their uh, screen names in my head here. So this is a test for me. All right, so gold closed out today with a bullish reversal bar. Really, really nice day. And we broke out today on gold. A very, very good day. Hey, Bruno, good to see you. Hey, I was thinking about you in the covered calls. So I brought up, um, I brought up the option chain for NUGT. So if you have any questions. So we'll, we'll, we'll go over that if you want to spend a couple of minutes talking about options. If you want to type in your questions in advance and I'll go over them for you. All right, so goal looking good here. So that's looking good. Bank's looking good. But they saw topping action. Let's leave things off with USLV. And folks, if you're just joining in, if you want me to go over any of your symbols, if you want me to ask any questions, 
This is your time, not mine. I'm here making myself available to you. And you got it, PA, Barun. Um, you know, ask your questions. This is your time. So I'm more than happy to uh, go over and try to add value to your membership. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Bruin's question, maybe we go through what you did yesterday with the covered call. Okay, yeah, we could do that. All right, so we'll leave it off with silver. Then we'll segue into the covered call topic. Uh, USLV, we broke out here on the 17th. We've pulled back. We did a retest. We attempted a rally yesterday, but the bond market was weak, right? And uh, the price of silver took it on the chin because bond prices were weak. Today, they recovered. What did the price of silver do? It didn't close positive, but it also recovered. So silver is looking good. We're going to be looking to add more to this position fairly soon. So that's that. All right, so to Barun, let me let me fill you out for your experience level with options. Have you ever traded options before? And if so, what kind of options trading? Selling covered calls? Is it is it how to sell covered calls, or is it my strategy behind when I sell those covered calls? Okay, and while you're typing in your answers, I'll go over A N G I. I'll use uh, Thinkorswim. Hey, Bill. Okay. You, you've never bought options? Well, uh, uh, Did you talk about LEBU yet? No, I didn't, but I can for you, Bill. No doubt. We'll cover that. All right, so we'll go over Angie's list. So this is the chart to watch here. See how tight we are? We've been stair-stepping higher up and through resistance levels, holding, consolidating, then breaking out, then consolidating. This is really wonderful price action. And I know people are out there thinking, what the heck is this guy trading Angie's List for? It's a nice chart. It's setting up very nicely. And we know that there is, you're welcome, Bill. Uh, we know that there are a lot of shorts in the name. So what I'm looking for here is a daily breakout on Angie's list. And I think that on that breakout, we're probably going to rally up to where I have this alert set at $8.14. We'll probably get there in a heartbeat. But I do not want to be long of the shares into earnings. I want to sell. I want to get out. This is a swing trade only. So it's not an investment. It's not a core position. So we really need to identify what the strategy is here. The strategy is, is to build a position on strength because it's a weak stock building strength and they have a lot of shorts in the name that are asleep at the switch and they're going to get squeezed. They're going to get squeezed really, really hard and I want to help them get squeezed. So uh, let's drill down to a daily chart. I mean a four hour chart. Sorry about that. All right. So the RSI here is very interesting in that we've been putting in higher lows higher highs, and we even broke out yesterday on RSI. No follow-through today. And if the small caps didn't sell off the highs of the day, I think that we would have broken out today. Now we have a little bit of resistance here. We closed down below it. But I want to be a buyer. I want to add to this position on a close above and a retest of six spot A5 by the end of business, perhaps tomorrow, the next day, whenever. Uh, as long as the markets aren't in free fall, I'm not going to add more to this position. If the markets are declining, as they did today, and Angie's list is moving higher, it's showing relative strength, that's all well and good. Uh, I'm not going to add more betting that it's going to beat the market because weak stocks tend to get weaker. So... That's the strategy behind it right now. I'm making the assumption when I say I want to add more, 
I'm making the assumption that the small caps, the micro caps are going to continue higher as well. If they don't, then we stay conservative with, they tr with the trade. If they break out to new daily highs, well, then we'll get more aggressive long as we break out on Angie's list, if that makes sense. And again, our price target here is $8.14 on Angie's list. Any other questions on Angie's list, Barun? Okay, and we'll go over, let's go back to stockcharts.com. We'll go over LABU. We'll go with the weekly view. All right, so I said on Sunday that I liked selling puts. I wouldn't want to buy LABU. Uh, I did say that I would like to sell puts. I haven't this week. So the shares got away from us. So looking at the weekly chart, how are we setting up here? Let's revise this chart. We have a breakout on RSI so far this week. This is subject to change, right? On Friday afternoon, if we're above this support level on the close on Friday, that's bullish stuff because you have a, an indicator leading price performance. Now, Stokes have broken out. Now, our upper band of resistance is here right here at let's say $40 per share now this at some point in time this line here the reason why I'm extrapolating it out extending it out is because if and when we do break out above $40 per share this line here which acted as support is now going to become a rising ceiling of resistance. Doesn't mean we can't break out above it on strength, good volume, but it's going to act as resistance. So I want to keep that line up there to remind me. So last week we saw topping action on the candlestick. That implies we had sellers moving in. This week, same deal. Sellers moving in on strength. So from a weekly perspective, and the daily chart may change my mind, but from a weekly view it's a chart that's improving. It's not a chart that I would buy yet. Too much risk, not enough reward. Would I consider con would I consider selling puts? Yes. Because our puts get us long of the trade, however, at a discounted price from the day's close of today. But when you're opening up, and this is really going to speak to Varun and how we look at opening up. What's our strategy? Let's begin with that. What's our strategy of uh, either A, selling a covered call? Because the goal is not to give up our shares on a covered call. It's simply to generate income. I don't want those shares uh, called away from me because I want to own them for longer term. And ideally, if I'm selling puts, I'm doing so to generate income. So... Ideally, they're not put to me, but if they are, I've done my analysis and I'm willing to accept those shares because I, I, I entered that trade willing to accept the shares at a good risk reward entry point because ideally I had opened up my put option at a support level, right? And ideally in a perfect world, that support level should hold. Now, if suppose I'm using, let's go to a daily chart here of LABU. And let's bring up the options chain. I don't normally use Yahoo Finance, but for uh, illustrative purposes, I'll do it right now. All right, so. 
These are the calls. How do they have this laid out? All right, puts down here. All right, so what we're looking at here are weekly contracts set to expire this coming Friday, which I screwed up on the, thanks for pointing it out, Barun, about me typing in the wrong uh, date. So the 25th is the next op uh, uh, options expiration date. You can see that they sell in 50 cent increments, which is great. I love that. And a lot of time decay so far this week has already occurred. So let's take a look at how we closed out the day. What was our price? Uh, we closed out the day at 36.13. Let's first identify on a chart where we have support. In fact, I'm going to bring up uh, I'm going to bring up Trend Spider. Because what I want to do is I want to know where my uh, key support levels are because I want it if I'm going to sell premium I want to sell it at a support level so let's bring up LABU let's first appreciate where we have support and resistance on a weekly basis we have resistance up here at 3940 so again I wouldn't buy these shares right now Now we have support at 30. We also have support here at 33.53. So it all depends upon your risk tolerances, okay? If you're bullish on LABU and you're willing to say, okay, I am going to accept the shares put to me at, let's say, the 33.50 strike price here. And there's not much premium here left in the week. Let's say you get 20 cents per contract. That's not enough for me to make this trade. I would go out further. Now the 33.50 strike price going out to November the 1st would bring you in about 75 cents per contract. So what you do is you take your $33 and 50 cents minus your premium paid. That's your basis cost, not including commissions and whatnot, fees. So the question when, before you enter the trade is, am I willing to accept these shares on a technical basis based upon this price point, price point were they put to me? If not, then you need to take a look at the 30 strike price because that's more of a uh, stronger support level. But if you're bullish on these shares, you're not ready to buy them now, look at the 33.50 strike price. If they're assigned to you, your actual basis cost is $32.75 if assigned. Any questions on that? Yeah, I can, Barun. And I'm looking at your uh, question.
So the not yet, that's referring to options regarding your options experience? Has this helped at all? Should I do something different here to help illustrate better? Selling puts? And keep in mind, this is a naked position. And what I mean by naked is that um, you have, for all intents and purposes, unlimited downside meaning to zero on your investment. So if it goes, you have maximum downside here, $32.75 on the trade if you don't stop out. Uh, however, if you're short of the shares, that's a covered position, right? So you're protected on the downside. So what this trade is here is a more risky naked position. Barun, before we go to the uh, covered calls on N-U-G-T. That was, Bill? You sure? I can go into more detail uh, on the charts. So basically what we're looking at is first we want to qualify technical support. That matters most. Then we need to say to ourselves, okay, um, I'm concerned about, let's go to a daily chart here. I'm concerned about the fact that we closed off the highs of the day. It bothers me. And I'm expecting a pullback here. And on that pullback, if the shares were assigned to me at $32.75, can I sleep at night with that out there? If not, then take a look at the 30 strike price. You need to be able to sleep at night. Selling premium is not without its uh, anxiety. Uh, it does have a lot of um, benefits. I love selling premium. Uh, Friday is when there's option expiration. I do the jig, the Irish jig. You know, so I love it. Okay. Okay, let's set something up for um, tomorrow night, Barun, after uh, market wrap. That way I have a fresh mind because after I'm done here, I'm going to be wiped out. So we'll spend a few minutes tomorrow night if that works for you, Okay. All right, so long story short, Bill and Brew, we need, we need to identify solid support, know whether or not inside your heart of hearts you're going to be willing to accept those shares, and know where the trend is on a weekly basis. Right now, we're moving up higher. Uh, we haven't broken out, so it's better to be a little bit more conservative. Were we in a strong uptrend, then I, you're welcome, Brew. Uh, were we in a strong uptrend, I would keep... I, if, if, if LABU were in a strong uptrend right now, I would sell at the money puts, bringing in that income. I would be a lot more aggressive, but we're not, right? We're just beginning to break out on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. You know, we're still in a tightening wedge formation. So, you know, I'm a little bit more conservative here because if this market rolls over, uh, it's a leveraged DTF. It can go against you real fast and real hard. So we need to appreciate that. And we're breaking out on a weekly basis relative strength. And Stokes looking really good weekly basis. So I like the weekly setup here. I would be far more constructive on LAB on a close on a weekly basis above $40 per share. That would be really wonderful. Right now, it's kind of in no man's land. All right, let's talk about NUGT and covered calls quickly. And then we'll wrap this up. And I got a lot of value out of this. I, I hope that you did too. Uh, you know, give me feedback if you if I'm go if I'm being too wonky about uh, whatever. I can I can get lost in the weeds at times, going into detail, or maybe I'm not going into enough detail. Stop me. Uh, use the chat box to rein me back in and redirect me on what you want me to answer, uh, because sometimes direction can be lost in a text box, and at some point in time in the future. I'm going to look to uh, have like live group sessions, but uh, like conference calls. And that'll be probably on a monthly basis and probably with a limited group. I'll probably make that a goal level membership type uh, feature because it's going to take a lot of energy on my part to put that together and have those sessions. So uh, more to come on that, but that's off in the future. That's a 2020 thing. Um, so NUGT. So what matters here to me is that
and this is what really attracted me to selling calls uh, on sell, yeah selling covered calls on um, NUGT, and it's that on a weekly basis. You can see I already I documented this, and I've mentioned it on Market Wrap. I even typed this in. You're loving all the live streaming activity. I'm sure it's very taxing for you, but we pre- oh, good. Thank you very much. You know, sometimes you don't know whether or not you're doing what people like or, you know, I'm just feeling my way around here. So uh, the feedback, I thrive on it. That's why I put the survey out there. You know, and I really do. I look at the surveys and I try to um, direct my focus towards what you folks want because that's really all that matters in the end. So thanks for the feedback, Barun. I really appreciate that, as always. Uh, so I, I typed this out here, and this was a couple of weeks ago. Yikes, warning flag on the track. Stokes were down below the 50 level, and that was my cue. Sell covered calls. Sell covered calls. Because what happens when, I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you a minute to answer this. What happens when, uh, yeah, both lines on Stokes trending down below 50 on a weekly or daily basis. What normally happens to rallies? I gave you a clue there. And while I'm waiting for the answer, I'll see whether or not I get an answer to that question. And I'm going to read Bill's uh, comment here. Thanks, Bob. It's really interesting and helpful on the options. I want to start getting in and generating that premium. But it's kind of intimidating with all the terms. And it is kind of confusing. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's a good point. And I sometimes use those terms. I try to stay away from them. But I have been asked in the past to put together... Uh, some sort of because uh, sometimes I use my own terminology. Ah, there you go, Barun on the on the money, man. Good for you. Rallies tend to fade. Good stuff. So, and, and in that environment, it's a great environment to sell covered calls in to bide your time because you don't want to get stopped out or you don't want to uh, exit your position. So, how do you how do you make money, right? Uh, you sell covered calls. You generate income. And we've generated over the past three weeks a, a, a lot of money. We've done really well. So it helps us live through the sell-offs. So that's why I like to sell covered calls. And I'll go into I'll go into another reason why I sell covered calls while in an uptrend. Be, before I go into that, I want to talk about Bill and his comment with regard to uh, nomenclature. And yeah, it can be confusing. And we'll work on that in the future. You have the Greek... Um, you have beta, which is uh, uh, w- a very important one. Uh, that is volatility. You have um, uh, delta, which is also very important. That is the price performance of the option relative to the stock. That's, that's a session in and of itself to talk about for easily a half hour with no questions, with Q&A, an hour. So I, I plan on putting together two programs according to the survey that I got back. So far, two programs going out into 2020. One is on swing trading with a focus on strategy and on uh, risk reward uh, and managing stops. That's the takeaway from the survey that I got. And if you agree with that, please leave a comment. Uh, the second tutorial I'm going to put together or a course I'm going to put together is going to be on uh, basically uh, the basics of selling options and selling premium. And... I'll probably work on a glossary of terms and definitions for uh, that course. And for members, that's going to be free. So I'm going to be putting that into Contrarian University, finally. Uh, I'm going to be populating that. Members will have full access to that. And I plan on selling it as a standalone course option for those who are not members. and They don't want to subscribe, which is fine, but they want the value of the course. So that's the game plan. So if you're wondering whether or not that's going to be a charge to you as a member, no, definitely not. I'm giving it away to you. It's part of your membership. Um, So uh, let's get back to NUGT and our strategy moving forward uh, with regard to selling premium. Now, I've talked about this in the past, and I'm going to wrap up with this because it's about 7 o'clock Eastern here. And I am beginning to fade a bit. So let's go back. I'm sure I brought these up to you in the past. There's a there's a uh, unsurprising trend that occurs 
with NUGT when a certain event occurs. And this is a chart of the breakout of NUGT back when the Federal Reserve first began to raise rates, that first rate hike in several years. And that was right back here in December. And what did NUGT do? It rallied, then faded, and that was the bottom. And we began to rally. And we're going to extend this out a little bit, going out to July, because I want to point out what occurred. And what occurred was, and this is what I was doing back then, uh, every time we hit the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, I would, I would sell covered calls into that event. And I would wait for the pullback. I would then buy the call contract back, book those profits. I wouldn't wait for uh, uh, options expiration. I would just buy the calls back, suck in that profit, because I expected the trend to continue, which it did. And we did that over and over and over again. And I was selling just out of the money contracts. What does that mean? So let's say here we hit the third standard deviation Bollinger Band at $39.42. 32 cents. 32 cents. Uh, I would sell an at the money contract. What that means is either A, I would sell the 30 nine strike price which is technically in the money but just barely or the 40 strike price betting that we would get a pullback and on that pullback you would just see the value of those options just dry up and i would just sweep in take my profits as we pulled back we would flash a bullish reversal bar then we knew it was game on and we bought those contracts back because we didn't want to get taken out of our position we didn't want to get greedy, hoping that the options would expire worthless. I can go into strategy with regard to why we don't wait for options expiration in the future. It's, it's going to take too long of a conversation. And I have a video I'd like to play. It was put together by uh, Tom Sarsnoff on Tasty Trade. I would strongly suggest if you have uh, Roku, download uh, Tasty Trade channel. Very, very good. And I met Tom Sarsnoff. This is a very, very intelligent guy. He built Thinkorswim. Very intelligent guy. And the way I trade options is in line with his rationale, his logic of not waiting for uh, options expiration. We sometimes do when a stock is in a downtrend and we're selling covered calls because there's no reason to close it out. I'm not betting on a big bull run. But when you're seeing a big trend like this form, you don't want to put a cap on your upside earnings. Because the true play is, is that you want, to, you want those shares to run and you want to make a million bucks. You don't want to cap your uh, upside potential because you want to bring in a few hundred, a few thousand dollars worth of premium. It doesn't make sense. Too much risk, not enough reward. And trust me, trust me when I say this, if you do not scalp those profits on a stock that is in an uptrend or an ETF in this case, you're going to regret it. Because one day... You're going to get the pullback. You would have seen a profit, let's say 500 bucks, right? Uh, you have that profit there. And then you begin to see a reversal, a bottoming action on the underlying stock. But you're betting that, you know what, I'm betting. I'm going to cross my fingers here. It's not going to hit my strike price. Let's say it's $40 per share. Think about what happened between the time on February the 10th, between we hit the low at 20. 872 and by the time we hit $40 per share we did that here on the 11th so we bottomed out on the 10th the next day we were above the strike price so lesson learned here when we're in an uptrend on nugget or, or any other stock that you you're selling covered calls on don't wait for options expiration wait for an overbought condition like hitting the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, then sell that covered call, buy it back on the pullback, and then let your shares continue higher, and then look to resell them again in the future. Like back here, you got a pullback. Like back here, you got a pullback, and you scalp the cream off the top. Like back here, and a pullback. Like back here, and a pullback. 
rinse, wash, repeat. There's a system here. There's a strategy. And this is what I plan on doing with NUGT in the future. Any questions on this at all? I'm glad you got value out of that, Barun. Any questions at all? All right, folks. I know there's a delay here. I want to give you an opportunity to enter before I say goodnight to you. Okay. Um, with that, I guess there are no more questions. I hope everybody got value out of this. Uh, if, you have any, if you're thinking tonight, you're laying with your head down on the pillow and you're saying, okay, here's my suggestion for Bob. Uh, leave it in the forum or uh, email it to me. I read them. I read the feedback and I read them very, very carefully. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm glad you got value out of it, Bill. Thank you very much for being here. Everybody have a great night and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be well. Sounds good, Barone. Look forward to it, man. Good night, Bill. Good night, Barone. Be well. Good night, everyone else, too.